Turn to John chapter 1, verse 43 and 50. Turn to John chapter 1. Forty-three and fifty. The day following, Jesus would go forth into Galilee, and he feel in and in and find a Philip, and said unto him, "Follow me." You see, the Lord wants wants intimacy with Philip. Follow me. Turn to John chapter three, verse one to three. But the third day, there was a man. Of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews, the same came to Jesus by night and said unto him, Rabbi, we know that thou art a teacher come from God, for no man can do these miracles that thou doest except God be with him. Jesus answered and said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Nicodemus is drawn aside by Christ wants Nicodemus to be intimate with him to know that it's not about religion but about being born again of the Holy Spirit if you turn to John chapter 4 verse 9 and 13 John chapter 4 verse 9 to 13 then said the woman Samaritan unto him how is it that thou being a Jew askest drink of me which am a woman of Samaria for the Jews have no dealings with Samaritans Jesus answered and said unto her if thou knewest the gift of God and who it is that said to thee give me to drink thou wouldst have asked of him and he would have given thee living water the woman said unto him sir thou hast nothing to draw with the well is deep from whence thou hast the living water out thou greater than our father Jacob which gave us the well and drank therein himself and his children and his cattle and Jesus answered and said unto her whosoever drinketh the same but whosoever drinketh of the water that I shall give him shall never thirst but the water that I shall give him shall be in him a well of water springing up into eternal life Do you see our Lord meets this woman at the well and he's inviting her to intimacy with him he is the well the spiritual well that she needs and we could go on and on and on and look at many many scriptures if you look at 2 Peter John chapter 21 verse 15 and 17 where where the Lord meets with Peter and wants to restore him you see too often in ministry we can be busy too often in ministry we can be busy and busy and busy and busy and really we lose the intimacy with Christ ministry is just becoming a rotor we can be so immersed in theology books reading apologetics big theological tombs that we forget what it's all about it's about intimacy with Christ we can be so enamored with the prestige that we have as ministers or pastors because people respect us or whatever but it's not about that it's about intimacy with Christ we can be so bogged down with controversies both nationally and locally because things are so bad but we forget that it's all about intimacy with Christ we can have problems at home and we can have problems in the church and yet we forget that it's all about intimacy with Christ and the one thing that God wants for you most of all is that you have an intimate relationship with him one writer says I don't agree with all his theology but Archbishop Temple said apart from him I can do nothing all fruit that I ever have been or can bear comes wholly from his life within me if you're going to be effective in ministry then you're going to be effective because you're intimate with Christ and as you're intimate with Christ the, the pulsating power of the Living God and his power will begin to work through you in your ministry but it begins with that time with Christ it begins with the with dwelling with Christ so what we've looked at so far is gospel ministry being a pastor means 
focusing on Christ. It means focusing on our relationship with Him. Because without that, we can't do anything. But then it's also to be realistic, to realize as a, as a pastor, as a minister, as a preacher, to realize that there will be persecution in the ministry. William Tyndale translated the Bible into English uh, 1492 to 1538. He was strangled to death. John Bunyan, a Puritan preacher, was put in prison. Charles Simeon, an Anglican minister, was locked out of his own church in Cambridge in 1759 to 1835. There will be persecution if you're a gospel minister. Make no bones about it. You have to realize as a preacher, as a minister, you will be persecuted. In John 15, 18, Hated me before it aided you. If you if you were of the world, the world would love his own. But because you are not of the world, but I have chosen you out of the world, therefore the world hate of you. Remember the word that I said unto you: the servant is not greater than the Lord. If they have persecuted me, they will also persecute you. If they have kept my saying, they will keep your saying. But all these things they will do unto you. For my name's sake, because they know not him that sent me. If you follow Christ as a preacher of the gospel, even as a Christian, you're going to be persecuted. In John chapter 8, verse 59, they tried to stone Jesus. <coughs> John 8, 59. They took up stones to cast at him himself and went out of the temple going through the midst of them and so passed by. And you as a pastor and a minister, you're, you're upset because of the persecution as a pastor. Why isn't the congregation being a blessing to you as it should? Why are you getting the backlash that you're getting? Well, Jesus was the best person ever lived and yet they wanted to stone him. You turn to John chapter 9.16. Therefore said some of the Pharisees, This man is not of God, because he keepeth not the Sabbath day. Others said, How can a man that is a sinner do such miracles? And there was a division among them. The Pharisees, the religious leaders of the Lord's time, mocked him, disagreed with him, were his enemies. John 11 verse 8. His disciples said unto him, Master, the Jews of late sought to stone thee again in chapter 11 47 then gathered the chief priests and the Pharisees a council and said what do we for this man doeth many miracles if we let him thus alone all men will believe on him and the Romans shall come and take away both our place and nation their Pharisees are plotting against him then we have in Jude uh, in uh, John thirteen twenty seven, and after the top, the sop Satan entered into him, and then said, Jesus, Jesus said unto him, Thou doest do quickly. For some of them thought because Judas had the bag that Jesus said unto him, Buy those things that we have need of, the feast, or that we should give something to the poor. He then, having received the sop, went immediately out, and he, Judas went and betrayed Jesus. We have in John nineteen fifteen. John nineteen fifteen. But they cried out, "Away with him! Crucify him!" The crowd were against Jesus. John nineteen verse one. Then Pilate therefore took Jesus and scourged him. He was whipped. And then John 19, 34. But one of the soldiers with the spear pierced his side forth and came forth out blood and water. My friend, as a, as a pastor, as a preacher, you're going to be persecuted. You're going to be persecuted. You mustn't be surprised at the attacks in your ministry. You mustn't be surprised at the opposition of your ministry.
that is part of being a minister it's part of being a servant of God you will have Leonard Ravenhill said if a Christian is not having tribulation in the world there is something wrong Thomas Watson said religion will cost us the tears of repentance and the blood of persecution you turn to Romans 8 17 Romans 8 17 and if the children then heirs heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ so be that we suffer with him that we may also be glorified together we're going to suffer 1 Peter chapter 4 verse 12 1 Peter chapter 4 verse 12 and 16 beloved think it not strange concerning the fiery trial which is is to try as though some strange thing happened unto you but rejoice in as much you are partakers of Christ's suffering that when his glory shall be revealed you may be glad also with exceeding joy if you be reproached for the name of Christ happy are ye for the spirit of glory and of God resteth upon you on their part he is evil spoken of but on your part he is glorified you see persecution comes to those who wish to sow the seed and preach the gospel some will fall away because of this persecution if you read Matthew chapter 13 20 21 it talks